Hello everybody, this is Zigzag Zog coming to you from Western Kentucky. We're back to continue the playthrough of Phoenix Point, and we had a nice little successful mission last episode, and we are now in that supportive stage with the Disciples of Anu. We now know where all their havens are located. That's a big one to, to gain for us, uh, saving us a lot of exploration time. Um, what I'd like to do, or what I'm thinking, is we have a little healing to do for Bucky Buck over here. Uh, yes, I could probably take a different soldier in uh, his place, but I'm interested in building up at the moment. My core, my core crew, my core, my core soldiers going out and getting the job done. Uh, so we're going to heal him up. If we're lucky, there will still be a little bit of time left uh, that won't waste away. Although it looks like it's pretty far gone here. Uh, if we have time after we heal up, and I'm not going to worry about even the stamina, I'm, once his health is healed up, I'm thinking we're going to pop over here to Uruk and, and give a little uh, help out here and see if we can't gain some more favor from the Disciples of Anu. After that, hoping to jump down over here to the Caribbean and verifying uh, that this might be our Phoenix base over in the Caribbean. Uh, in the meantime, we have funds, or, or and if at least what is considered the funds in this game, and that is tech. We're back up to 200. Uh, we got nice materials and decent amount of food. Uh, so I want to look at doing a couple things. One of which is I would like to build food to get that moving positive again. Uh, yes, we can always trade for it, but why not uh, just have it in the positive on our own so we're not worrying or not having to worry about it. And it's not too expensive, if I recall. 200 materials, only 40 tech. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. And then some other things I wanna look at is uh, maybe building up some stuff for our personnel, for our new guys. So when we are ready to take them out, they'll have some armor and whatnot to be able to wear. Um, uh, research is fine. Excuse me, manufacturing, that's where I was headed. Um, equipment wise, oh, that was the other thing I wanted to show y'all that I, I already took a look at while I was, before I started recording, is when you go in here to equipment, uh, you're going to find, if I choose it all, we did, uh, apparently we do pick up the dropped weapons of the enemy, um, and that is we picked up a new a Phoenix sniper rifle, the Firebird SR, that's the kind we're already using. So since we gained some sniper rifle proficiency from, not Alexis, but Joan of Arc, uh, I'm thinking that may be what I end up equipping her with. And at the same time, we're going to have to do a little purchasing of, of ammo because we're a little shy on the ammo front. And we got, we're picking up lots of different magazines here of guns we don't even have the ability to use yet, but uh, we'll take it. I'm sure we'll either develop them or get exposed to them somehow, maybe pick them up from fallen enemies uh, down the road. So anyway, let's get Joan of Arc. I'm, I'm thinking I want to switch you out and get you sniper based. And maybe what we do, we'll keep the current armor with you and build some sniper armor. And once that build, we can transfer this over to our other assault. In fact, uh, the other assault is down here. We might as well just give the gun to her now. Or him, excuse me. <laughs> All right, there's the assault rifle in his hands. Um, we'll also give him this and this. So he's got some basic equipment and then... Uh, Let's go ahead and manufacture some stuff. So it's good I don't have to manufacture a sniper rifle, but I will go ahead and manufacture some sniper armor. And that would be the Banshee. So we will start with the body armor, leg armor, and the helmet. And we still have decent supplies left. Um, equipment wise, we definitely need to get ourselves equipped with the AR-1 magazine. Uh, we are down to zero in reserve and we were going through it fast. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time on this. In fact, with so many assaults, we're just gonna get this up to very good levels here. 
Um, also, we are in the process of building the grenade launcher. I'm kind of thinking that I would like to at least have one bit of uh, ammo. So when it's built that we can, we can use it. And finally, um, let's see how we're sitting on other armor uh, or other ammo. The Firebird is okay. The handgun is okay. Although I probably want to build another handgun when I have a chance. Uh, kind of went, kind of blew through the materials. Uh, do want to get a couple more in reserve for the Hell Cannon, which <laughs> really worked well for us last mission. And uh, wouldn't mind a couple more grenades because we had been throwing a few. In fact, we'll go one more. There we go. So we're a little low on the materials now, but I'm feeling like we're getting ourselves positioned for when we go back out there. Now let's get out to the Geoscape. Let's watch our blue bar down here for Bucky. And uh, once he's healed, see if we have enough time left to get over there to help out in the Haven Defense. Cross your fingers. I don't know how quickly that timer is going to move for the Haven Defense. It's moving quicker than my health. So it looks like we will not be able to do it. Yes. It was repelled. Um, they repelled the attack. So I, I was afraid we might run out of time, but I didn't want to go in there and mess with it until uh, I had myself fully healed. I didn't want to risk a brand new soldier who just got himself promoted. So let's go down here and check out the base and see if this is indeed the Phoenix base ahead of us. Triton. What do we get from this? Ooh, shotgun! So we now have some shotguns. So we have the ability to uh, mix up and uh, dabble in some different builds with our assaults. They can carry the shotguns, I believe. So as soon as I get a few more materials, that is what we will work on. That's a nice thing to know and have completed the Triton op autopsy. Let's get in here to research and see if I want to add. Well, we're just going to park this one over there. Not that I just so in case these other two run out, 13 hours, 13 hours, at least I got something that we're researching, even though it's a long haul research. We may, if we get new stuff, stick it in ahead of there. Uh, let's continue our exploration. Ah, and we indeed did have a base here. What do we do or what do we have to do to get it back online? That is my question. This is the base, so we got to repair some stuff. And how do I go about doing that? So let me look around a little bit in this bay here and see what it is. What's in manufacturing here? Not enough resources. I thought I had spent all my resources. Oh, that's not enough resources to build anything. Um, I don't know what the exclamation point was for other than maybe I don't have enough resources to build anything else is what it's telling me. That's fine. Um, um, ba -dum, ba -dum. Base wise, what is it going to take? I don't have what it needs to to repair these guys probably because I don't have enough of, of uh, don't have enough materials. I wonder if I need to cancel some things I'm building now. I think what will hold off I I don't think it's urgent that I have this built immediately, um, but we need to repair energy generator, store, satellite uplink. Uh, so we will. I Actually, with the satellite uplink, I think it's going to allow us to get a second scan going, too, to give us more exploration options. So let's see. Has our current scan got us anything new to explore? We do over here. So uh, while we're looking to gain some more materials, let's get down here and start some more exploration. Construction complete. There's some question marks popping up. Lost expedition. Our operatives have discovered the broken remains of an experimental the Sinedrian mobile lab. Apparently the vehicle suffered a containment failure. There are no signs of the crew, but some of the equipment could be salvaged. Um, inform Sinedrian regarding our discovery. Give them the equipment. 
take everything useful then inform Sinedrian or salvage the equipment without informing a Sinedrian. Uh, why don't we take the equipment we found? Uh, let's try it this way. We need everything useful and then we'll see if uh, this gives us any favor with the Sinedrians by letting them know about it. <laughs> I'm taking the risk that they will therefore suspect us from stripping it down, uh, but we'll give this one a try and find out. Uh, yeah, okay, the attitude goes up. We got some tech. Not what we needed. We needed some materials, but what the hey. Dr. Hussein Habenek, a Sinedrian scientist who helped design the lab, sends us a message of thanks. He had argued against deploying it so early, but was outvoted. There is little pleasure to be had in being proven right about something so terrible, he says. I wish I knew what happened. I suppose it will always haunt me. Okay, we got question marks that are uh, that abound, so let's get down here and do some more exploring. First foray into South America. Research complete. New Jerka. There's our supplies we need. Ha <laughs> ha! Very, 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 very good. New Jericho was one man's vision, and everything depended on that one man. Before the war, Tobias West had been a billionaire, an elusive, controversial businessman who denounced war even as he profited from it. When the world fell, his empire began to rise. Some said he was a genius, a man of principle, dedicated to equality and merit, fighting to preserve the core of human freedom, our will. They said he had a plan, that he could lead us to victory. Others called him a dictator, a megalomaniac, fearful of infection and obsessed with purity. They said he was willing to do anything to win, no matter the cost. The Phoenix Project needed allies. New Jericho could help us turn the tide, but it all depended on one man. All right, so... Uh... We may still try to get friendly enough just to get uh, the location of all his bases, but in the meantime, let's continue our exploration. And it happens to be a uh, New Jericho base, speaking of the devil. Let's get over here, do some more exploration. And we're gonna have to figure out where we want to do another. Oh, ambush time! We gotta survive three turns. Fortunately, the threat level is low, taking place at nighttime. Let's see if we can handle our ambush. Okay, let's get the lay of the land here. We gotta survive for three turns, and in the course of this ambush being set up against us, and actually, I don't see anybody. I do not see anybody. So we don't know what direction they'll be coming from. Uh, that's not. Awesome in and of itself. I'm wondering if it uh, behooves me to put my sniper up high. Uh, getting some vision but wasting her shot. That's a good question because we don't know. If they're coming from up here on the what I'll call the north side, um, we got a nice little wall in the way uh, uh, that they got to go around that blocks their line of sight. And I'm kind of thinking maybe... That's why we can't see them. Maybe that's where they're coming from. They could also be coming from what we'll call the south because they could be blocked by this bunch of rocks. So I think in a way what I need to do is uh, get some five. vision. Maybe it would be safer to first move and jetpack up here with our heavy. So at least if he ends up being a little exposed up here on the top because there's not any single spot that has good two-way cover overall. Um, I think that may be the first jump I make because um, if he becomes a target depending on what we're facing hopefully he can survive if I pick the wrong cover in the wrong direction let's see what he exposes we need to see we need to get the lay of the land I'm thinking for this ambush and nothing now we get he should have some decent vision out there I would think so I guess uh, with that in mind we we motor our sniper up here in fact maybe this is where I put the sniper um, 
And one thing I've noticed is uh, something I got to break a pattern on. The ambushes, you don't get a chance to equip. You don't get a chance to promote. That's for set missions. So I'm probably going to need to break my pattern of holding off on my promotions till uh, the start or before next mission just because I lose the advantage of having that promotion, for instance, with Keith uh, by holding off. So we'll have to remember or I will have to look at breaking that pattern. Now you can make a law or a quick dash up here, Alexis. That's where I'm going to have you go. Making haste. Your movement hasn't stopped. Who knows who we're facing there for. Um, I guess everybody else is going to be on a bunch of overwatches. I do think I did equip... Yes, I did equip a sniper rifle on Joan of Arc. Uh, so I think... We will set some overwatch here. And since you can cover the longest distances, uh, this is the directions we'll have you and we'll put your, we'll make it wide and we'll put it out far, uh, depending on where they may come from. Providing overwatch. Now we're going to have others that we got to get out on Overwatch. I think we'll keep try to keep our coverage tight, or our our zones of coverage close. Um, boy, it's just hard knowing they can be coming from all sorts of different directions. Uh, Bucky, you're just healed up, and hopefully we aren't giving you uh, flanked cover by going here. But I want to have a little. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you alley duty or back back door duty. Moving out. Over here. Yeah, we're gonna have you watch out this direction. Ah, out of ammo, reload. So already we are out of ammo. And I did not reload because we got caught with our pants down. Oh boy. So let's reload, hopefully. Now it will, yeah, we, we still got the ability. Oh, and because the ammo was equipped, did you just notice that? This was one last mission I equipped ready to carry a knot on the body, so that didn't waste a moment or a waste in action by having it on my person. So we still have the advantage or benefit of being able to overwatch. So that has answered one of my questions on how some of these mechanics work. Uh, let's give you kind of a spread out version out this way and see if they appear over this way. Jeffrey? Holding position. Um, finally, we have one more to place. And I'm thinking we're going to bring you right down On here. T-Bone, we're going to have you provide yours more down over in this area. See if we can pick something up over here. And I hope we are covered because that is it. Let's kind of zoom out and see if we can pick up where they're coming from or where the ambush is coming from and who the heck we're facing. Oh no, there's the enemy spotted. I mean, we got four enemies spotted. Ooh, he's got armor, he's got armor. He's also got a machine gun. Is he? Oh, 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 oh God, they got machine guns. Hopefully they're moving so far that they come. Oh, thank God. They cannot take a shot. So there's only two at the moment. But they're the kind I don't like. They are mega armored and they are mega... Mega machine gunned up. <laughs> I don't like their weapon and I don't like their armor. How's that? Let's, uh, I think you should be able to shoot right past the armor from the position you're in. Let's Preparing hope to fire. that's the case. Yeah, we can take him right down in the leg. Is there anything that gives us... That really cuts down on the willpower by shooting right in there. Uh, but let's just uh, see if we can't make him a little bit immobile. Or how about let's just kill him? <laughs> oh, way to go. I love those close range shots. 
that's for sure. Uh, we're going to have the same success over here. Uh, we're going to give it a try. We can get right past that armor, thank goodness. Target down. Shoo, thank goodness they had to double move and get in there and not have the ability to fire their weapons. It looks like, uh, other than you, Bucky, thank move. you for taking them down. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, we're going to put everybody, I guess, back on Overwatch because uh, we have once again lost sight of the enemy. So if we got some coming from up this way, I'm thinking, because ambushes usually you get sandwiched between forces, right? Isn't that kind of the way it works sometimes? Uh, let's kind of, hmm. Let's park you right here, Trevor. And let's. I'm here. That will still give you a shot or be able to overwatch. Now all of a sudden I'm worrying since I'm not seeing anybody over here now and wondering if I'm setting myself up to be flanked. But at least we have overwatch now from our sniper up upon high. And we're going to have you cover out here in a big wide arc. Because you can. And uh, we're going to do your overwatch down here where I'm, I'm guessing and perhaps uh, wrong since we're not seeing anybody. I was guessing that perhaps we would see some, see some enemies down this way. Let's hope our overwatch is not going to be wasted. Uh, that means with you T-Bone uh, we're kind of having your overwatch come over this way. And we want a wide span. So you can pick up both this alley down here and back behind us a bit. Got you covered. Bucky, we don't have your overwatch available now, but we do have overwatch available from a grounded sniper. And let's make a wide expanse to cover advance from this side once again I guess there's a chance it could be behind us so maybe we do it this way that way you got both sides covered how about that and finally we have to figure out what we want to do with you Keith I don't know where to have you hiding out where to put you I'm kind of thinking, uh, let's get you down. On, I'm kind of feeling nervous about this backside over here. So I'm going to take you down off of high, move you over here. Be ready for a potential close range shot. And I think that is our movement right there. So let's kind of zoom on out and see where we might pick them up. I think then next turn, and we'll start seeing where our evac is going to be located. Nothing. Nothing. The mystery deepens. Mystery deepens. Now we still don't have an evac point, which we should get after, you know, by our next turn, we should then know where our evac is to get out of here. So uh, that makes me a little nervous. So they moving around. So next time when they move towards us, they can, uh... but fortunately, Bucky, that means you have your overwatch back. I think we're going to play the game again. You're going to cover the alleys from this side. And we're kind of going to do the same setup. So let's get out here, guys, and uh, see what we can do. Overwatch. <laughs> We're kind of doing some big spans of Overwatch, that's for sure, because we have not a clue where they're coming from. I'm going to be happy when we figure out where the freaking evac is. Yeah, you're kind of covering this side. Um, I'm thinking Keith. All set. 
we'll have you cover the back side, this little narrow alley, just in case they come around the corner here. It'll be nice close range overwatch for you, the kind you should uh, be doing in the first place. Oh boy, oh boy. The only thing, I like the idea of being able to pick your overwatch zones, but it is a little tedious setting it all up. Uh, but I guess I shouldn't complain that much, huh? Let's get it set. Holding position. And everybody's overwatch is set. Let's see if this time we run into somebody. We see, oh, coming from back, way back there. And way over there, the question now is going to be, the question now is going to be, where is our evac? Do we have an evac zone yet? Way over here. And that is running away from the enemies. So I'm wondering um, how much do they keep showing up and how much do they keep just uh, replenishing over on the side. So maybe we got rid of the original ones. Maybe what we need to do is hightail it out of here. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to try the hightailing it out of here method. Where are these guys coming from? Yeah, I don't think uh, they can get a shot here yet. So let's just run, 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 get everybody running, running, running over there. And if I have to, I have dashes available. I think we're just going to run to the evac I'm at ready. this point. That's the way I'm going to play it since the enemy doesn't seem to be nearby. We won't have any overwatch, so if I'm mistaken, if I've made the wrong call, we're going to pay for it. Yes, the only thing is I can't speed this up, can't tab between while they're doing their running. Got to wait till they finish their run, run, run. <laughs> yes, climb up and over. Get your exercise. As is with all these. <laughs> Dashing. And we'll see if we can get free of this ambush now. Uh, I don't think anybody else has movement points or action points left. Nope. So let's zoom on out, kind of keep our focus down this way and see if any of them come close enough to do anything or even set overwatch against us to prevent our escape. And apparently not. So let's see if the farthest person back can get out of here. Not quite. Uh, so with everybody else, it's not quite there. We maybe will set up some overwatches just in case they were able to get close enough. Um, with you, Alexis, because then next turn we definitely will all be able to escape Moving and get out. out of here. So I'm going to use you, Alexis, to kind of watch this alleyway because this guy, in fact, there he is, maybe trying to come around in that direction. Let's hope we can pick him up. Uh, we got some others that we can maybe set up in the same fashion. Although not quite. We can't quite get... We, and we spotted the enemy? Where did we spot the enemy? Oh, we spotted him through, through a doorway there. That's what we did. We spotted through a doorway. So maybe... No, I don't want to take a chance standing in the open. He doesn't have his shield up, though. How nice is that? But you can't see him quite from where you are. If I bring you right here, you don't have a, sh you don't have a line of sight. Oh, man, the only way you get a line of sight is standing in the open. What a big pain in the doo-doo is that? Oh, it's a second door. This is the section that, that hides it for us. So I guess what we can do is park you right here now that we know there's another way through and we will set your overwatch through this way. In fact, we might as well just make it wide so we cover both ways. And let me kind of 
kind of take a look at this angle and see if we can get anybody else in a decent spot that makes sense. Um, I don't like the idea of that exploding, but I could get Overwatch from there. And I still think you'll be... Well, let's hope. Yeah, with your move you got right now, you'll still be able to get out. Plus, you're, you're able to dash. That's not a problem. Uh, maybe I could have dashed all along... I'm ready. With you, Bucky, if I had thought about it instead. But now we got a little extra fun because I didn't even think about Dash. I am horrible about thinking of these uh, traits or these special abilities that use will points. I am forgetting them left and right. Let's try this. Rather than having you on Overwatch, let's see if you can even Amy. do some damage. Do you have enough vision in here? Potentially, potentially, potentially. We'll zero right there. We may hit the wall, or we may hit the alien. Let's find out what we're going to hit. We, we did some damage. We did some damage in the leg, so perhaps he'll be slowed down a little bit. We did a tiny bit of damage. Um, I'm thinking maybe what we do is we take you out of the line of sight now, just so we can't get some return fire. Of course, you're in a window, so if he moves in the right way, you can get return fire. Um, Keith, we're just going to set you up on Overwatch with your weapon. I don't know which direction he'll be coming from. So let's cover the doorway and the alleyway, and we'll keep it short, shorter for you. Who we got left? Who we got left? We got you left. Uh, so we're going to do it right this way. So I'm going to assume he's coming around the edge. And that's where we're going to aim for. Is hopefully shields down coming around the edge. Is that the last one? That is the last one. Let's see if we can uh, not take a hit. And again, get out and run out of here. He's going in through. The place I have the least coverage. Oh, we got a nice hit though. That made him change his mind. Oh no, he's gonna shoot! We took some damage, but nothing too major, it looks like. Okay. Shoo! Ready for action. Yeah, sorry about that, Joan of Arc, but you you didn't get hurt hit too badly. Uh, let's get ourselves out of here Sprinting. now. We not in? Did I miss it? I missed it by one square. <laughs> oh, I find that to be humorous. Oh no, am I not in there? Able to? There we go. There we go. I hadn't clicked on you. Let's get you out of there. Let's make sure this time I, I'm inside the square. I repeat, inside the square. Relocating. Tedious, tedious, tedious. I want to evac all like everybody else. Where is the box? It's right there. We can get you in right here. Okay, big guy, I think that gets you in the square right here. In fact, let's just make sure. <laughs> and we'll hit the evac. And finally, we got one more. Right there. Yeah, right there, Bucky. And let's get you out of here and uh, be done with this thing. Oh, we got some more levels up here. Joan of Arc. Bucky made it. 
So we got everybody at level three now. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Uh, let's go back to the geoscape. We survived the ambush, thank goodness. We deny the uh, enemy. Nothing recovered. Oh well, it's an ambush, what do you expect? Okay, so the ambush is there. Do we have anything else? What we gotta do is see uh, where else we are thinking we want to do a search. And I guess what we'll do is we'll go down here to Azupiranu and uh, start the scan down here. While we're there, take a peek at who they have to hire. It is another uh, berserker, up close and personal kind of guy. Um, I'm thinking perhaps we can sell a little bit of tech just to get that next thing that we need. Oh, well, I can't do the higher yet anyway, because I got, I'm at my capacity. I got to get my other base built up. So let's stop right there immediately. Let's go back to where we were. No, I don't want to go in that direction. I want to go back. It just keeps going, so I can't trade and reverse. The arrows go both ways, but uh, I'm just making it worse. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh yeah, I can just trade back tech for food, food for tech, either way, and it doesn't work that way. If you're in an area or a haven that provides food, that is all you get. You can't have them give back what you already traded them, so file that one away also. So we are not going to take him because we are at soldier capacity with our living quarters. What we need to do is see about uh, fixing up our other base. And we can, re let's start the repairing. First of all, get our energy generator going. We can afford that. First thing we need is power. Uh, secondly, do we have living quarters? No, so I probably want to increase some living quarters here. So we have the ability to hire some more. We need to build up our team. But I can't afford living quarters because I need 250 materials. So we gotta keep that in mind. We need materials, but at least in the meantime, uh, we will have the energy generator being under repair, which means once it's back online, we will get some more food production going uh, and everything else will start working that's uh, already repaired. Okay, um, let's just start our scan at this point. And I'm thinking just for the minor heal, um, I guess I gotta go all the way back to my base base. Let's just scan from here. Or maybe what we'll do is we'll go here, head back, get healed up 100%, and then move on out based on what our new scan is going to show us. Synedrian, we have finished understanding the Synedrian and their movement. It gains us some tech, which is amazing. But before we were depleted on tech, now we're depleted on the materials. So let's see what uh, we can learn about Synedrian. Synedrian was built on a dream, a world without hierarchies without leaders, where human beings could embrace the potential of technology without its destructive side effects. The radicals of the old world had been proven right. The status quo could not sustain itself. But what now? What was the next step? Some argued for coexistence with the Pandoran ecosystem, hoping for a peaceful solution. Others advocated putting humanity before nature and claiming the planet for themselves. Trusting in the safety of their havens, the people of Sanhedrin argued about the best way forward, but the Pandora virus had little interest in their arguments, and its power was still growing. Okay. Okay, okay, let's just continue back to uh, the question mark on the way to our base. When we get back to the base, I have a feeling that's where we'll just end this mission and then uh, start heading back perhaps down to South America, depending on what we find and need to explore down there. Unless, of course, we get ambushed. Brothers in Arms. 
Bastion Irazu is an independent haven founded by refugees during World War III. It grew to its present size when the surviving nation states finally collapsed during the Second Mist. It welcomes people with mutations, but is not allied with the disciples of Anu, as its people are generally suspicious of religious leaders. The Haven's mayor is one of its first citizens, Fabio Mena, a Costa Rican engineer specialized in communications who accidentally found himself becoming a leader. Please, just call me Fabio. Most people here do, he says. Being called mayor is strange. I'm just a man who tries to keep this place running. Of course, uh, that wasn't a Costa Rican accent, but, you know, I felt like I had to give him some kind of an accent, so excuse me. <laughs> Uh, let's continue. So we have found uh, um, our first independent haven. So there is something Fabio requires our help with. My brother, Felipe, well, it's really a long story, but he disappeared during the first mist, and I've been looking for him. I know what you're thinking, he's dead. But our family, well, again, it's a really long story. <laughs> let's say there are reasons he may have survived. And recently I found out he may be living in a haven controlled by the disciples of Anu. I've been trying to send word, but they won't. They won't my messages to reach him. <laughs> um, typo, grammar alert. <laughs> I've been trying to send word, but they won't my messages to reach him. So I need you to rescue him. So uh, we can do one of two things, agree to extract Felipe or contact the disciples of Anu to inquire. Um, I don't know if this will hurt our, our, our reputation with the disciples of Anu, but let's, uh, let's test out this one because I have imagined to agree to it, extract him will also piss them off. So let's just try a little diplomacy. As it turns out, the problem can be solved diplomatically. Felipe, whose mutations are quite extensive, has willingly joined the monastic order of silent contemplation. And Fabio's message were, messages were not relayed to avoid disturbing Felipe's meditation. In this case, however, an exception will be made with the blessing of the exalted, and the two brothers will be temporarily reunited. Fabio and Felipe have chosen paths that are not compatible with each other, but they are brothers and they will find a way of dealing with it. Family, as a wise man once said, should not end in blood. And very good, we got some materials out of that decision. I'm happy about that. Uh, so that's fun. We got a little haven, independent haven over here now. Uh, let's get back up here to heal. And that's where it'll be nice to have the uh, Caribbean base back online. We don't have to travel so far. Uh, to be able to heal back up once at least there's an infirmary. I don't think there's an infirmary over there, so We're gonna let a little time expand get rid of that blue health bar And we are healed All right, so what we're gonna do at this time is we got some new places to explore in the south um that's probably where I'm headed with my scans down there. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ready to go to the next level of story mission. Not sure. I'll think about it <laughs> in between recording sessions and maybe I'll decide to go away. Thing is, it's so remote over here. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is we will finish uh, scanning and exploring South America and then uh, start the chain of going across up Alaska over to Russia and kind of head in that direction. Uh, maybe we'll find another base along the way. Maybe, maybe. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. If you guys think I'm thinking wrong and need to do something else, move on towards something else, please give me a shout out. I'd be happy in the process of learning this game to take any suggestions you may have. So once again, Zigzag Zog signing off from Western Kentucky and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.